Chapter Ten of Bindle by Herbert Jenkins. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Don W. Jenkins. Chapter Ten. Mr. Hearty prays for Bindle. Mrs. Bindle had just returned from evening chapel. On Sundays, especially on Sunday evenings, when there had been time for the cumulative effect of her devotions to manifest itself, Mrs. Bindle was always in a chastened mood. She controlled those gusts of temper which plunged her back into the Doric and precipitated Bindle into L, dust and all. On this particular evening she was almost gentle. The bangs with which she accentuated the placing of each plate and dish upon the table were piano bangs, and Bindle duly noted the circumstance. With him Sunday was always a day of intellectual freedom. He aired his views more freely on that than on other days. Having laid the supper, Mrs. Bindle began to remove her bonnet. With a hat-pin in her mouth and her hands stretched behind her head in the act of untying an obstreperous veil that rested like a black line across the bridge of her nose, she remarked in that casual tone which with her betokened an item of great interest and importance. "'Mr. Arty prayed for you to-night, Bindle.' Bindle sat up in his chair, as if he had been shot. "'Arty what?' he interrogated, with unaccustomed anger in his voice, and with an unwanted flash in his eye. "'Arty what?' "'He prayed for you,' replied Mrs. Bindle, in what was for her a hushed voice. "'A beautiful prayer about a brother who had fallen by the wayside, a wheat ear among thorns.' "'He prayed for me, him?' Bindle removed his pipe from his mouth and gripping the bowl between thumb and finger pointed what remained of the stem at mrs bindle as she stuck a hat-pin through her bonnet and placed it on the dresser a prayed for me the words came with such deliberation and intensity that mrs bindle glanced round sharply yes she snapped and you want it you're nothing but an eden mrs bindle was forgetting her careful articulation a brother fallen by the roadside we sighed corrected mrs bindle as she banged a loaf on the table a brother oo as fallen by the wayside a wheat ear among thorns murmured bindle as if to himself suddenly he grinned the humour of the thing seemed to strike him prayed for in church leastwise chapel just like the royal family and rain you're comin on joe bindle he chuckled seems to amuse you remarked mrs bindle as she took her place at the table you're bit it replied bindle as he skilfully opened the tin of salmon you're just it it alfred Ordy was sent to annoy evan with his ims and tickle up joe bindle with his prayers if you was more like what he is you'd be a better man Ordy is as Ordy does flashed bindle with a grin then after a pause to enable him to reduce a particularly large mouthful of bread and salmon to conversational proportions he continued if i ad the runnin of this ere world there'd be some rather big alterations with a sort of end of the season sale and there'd be some pretty cheap loins in parsons and greengrocers not to speak of chapel goers i'm surprised at you bindle talking such blasphemies in a christian ome unless you stop i'll go out not while there's any salmon left mrs b remarked bindle oracularly you're a bad man i done my best i'm sure you have if you're done your second best or your third best joe bindle might have been a better man than what he is bindle dug a morsel of salmon out of the tin with the point of his knife i been too well brought up that's what's the matter with me you're always scoffin and sneerin at me in the chapel responded mrs bindle tartly it don't hurt me whatever you may think there you're wrong me blossom bindle was in high spirits his mind had been busily at work and he saw a way of bein a bloomin thorn in arty's wheat ear ole i ain't a scoffer it's just that i don't understand ow a thing what was meant to make people appy seems to make them about as joyful as a winkle wot feels the pin winkles are boiled first retorted the literal mrs bindle wiping round her plate with a piece of bread and bein dead don't feel pins i wouldn't eat them if it hurt besides winkles haven't anything to do with religion that's what makes em so tasty retorted bindle you and arty have sort of spoiled me appetite for religion but winkles still old me 
after a short silence he continued i never see a religious cove yet what i had any likin for leastwise what said he was religious it's a funny thing but as soon as people become good they seems to get about as comfortable to live with as an edge og in bed funny thing religion bindle continued there was one cove i knowed who spent his time in avin d t s and gettin saved about aff and aff with a slight leanin to d t s we called him suds and salvation suds bein his name for beer look at arty now he's always talkin of evan but he ain't in no urry to get there he's as nippy as a cat if he ears a motor ooter when he's crossin the road and he ussles like ell to get inside of a bus when it's rainin his life is not his own and he's waitin his call bindle looked up with a laugh how will he know it's for him and not next door he asked i won't listen to your evil talk announced mrs bindle half rising from her chair and then resuming her seat again as if thinking better of her determination when continued bindle imperturbably i ears of a place where the beer's better and cheaper than what i gets here or if i goes like a bunny after lettuce now you and Artie knows that in eaven appiness is better and cheaper than what it is here yet yer does all yer can to keep away from it and they're all the same that's what does me if you wasn't such an eathen you'd understand stormed mrs bindle and my life would be appier you won't go to chapel and you won't have a bath and i don't old with all this talk o washin it ain't natural broke in bindle cheerfully look at the ladies what do they do when they get sort of soiled do they wash not a bit of it they shoves on another coat of powder to cover it up i seen em doin it scarlet women mrs bindle's jaws snapped loudly yes and pink and whitens too i seen all sorts doin it which reminds me of how old snooker lorst his job he was sent round by his governor to a lady with an estimate for whitewashin and paper hangin when she saw the price she gives a sort of screech of surprise this is very expensive she says it didn't cost little more than half this last time that's the right price mum says snooker i been through it myself he says but i don't understand says she well mum says snooker there's the ceilings to be washed off he says and the old paper to be stripped off the walls he says and it all takes time but is that necessary says the lady well mum says snooker quiet like yer wouldn't put clean stockings on dirty legs would yer says he she was as angry as an ann and wrote in that snooker ad been sayin disgustin things im what blows a cornet in the salvation band o sundays why he ain't got enough wind left on weekdays to be disgustin with anyhow he lorst his job and the lady went to someone else as didn't talk about legs you ought to be ashamed of yourself joseph bindle telling me such lewd tales lewd what's that queried bindle an abomination in the sight of the lord replied mrs bindle sententiously your talk ain't fit for a woman to listen to last time we was at mr arty's you was speaking of babies in front of milly i went hot all over is babies lewd then inquired bindle innocently they're born in sin oh lord grinned bindle i'm always doing it fancy babies being as bad as that you shouldn't speak about them before a young girl like milly babies is funny things remarked bindle replacing his empty glass on the table and wiping his mouth with the back of his disengaged hand babies is funny things if yer want one it never seems to come but if yer don't want em it rains babies and for yer know it you've got a dose or two o triplets at three pound a bunch from the king there was Harry brown e wanted a kid and e aided kittens yet is missus never ad a baby though the cat was always avin kittens which shows as there wasn't anything wrong with the ouse i'm going to bed announced mrs bindle as she rose your talk ain't fit for decent ears to listen to if it wasn't the sabbath i'd tell you what i think of you i'm going out announced bindle with decision at this time you ain't going round to mr arty's there was a note of anxiety in mrs bindle's voice it's past nine o'clock i ain't decided whether i'll punch arty's ed or go and get drunk i'm sick of all this umbug 
whilst speaking bindle had seized his coat and cap and made for the door the utterance of the last word synchronized with the banging of the door itself bindle walked to the fulham road where he boarded an east-bound bus at beaufort street he alighted and a few minutes later was ringing the bell at five fifty beaufort mansions the address given to him by dick little the door was opened by little himself why it's aristophanes he said with obvious pleasure no sir joe bindle come in man whoever you are come in you're just the man we want said dick little heartily at that moment there was a gust of laughter from an adjoining room i'm afraid you got friends sir said bindle hesitating on the mat i'll call round another night sir shouldn't like to interrupt you rot come in little replied dragging bindle towards the room from whence the laughter came through the door he cried out shut up that damned row here's bindle the immortal bindle the momentary hush that little's command had produced was followed by yells of delight which crystallized into for he's a jolly good fellow bindle stood at the door listening in amazement then with a grin remarked to little seem to know me sir seem sort of fond to me know you bindle my boy there's not a fellow in tim's that doesn't know and love you a toast you fellows he cried little seized a glass half full of whiskey and soda a toast he cried to bindle the incomparable rival of aristophanes as a maker of mirth cries of bindle bindle echoed from all parts of the smoke-dimmed room and again there broke out what dick little had called the national anthem of good fellowship followed by calls for a speech before he knew it bindle was hoisted upon the table where he stood gazing down upon some eight or ten flushed faces gentlemen chair please little rapped a glass on the table silence ensued now aristophanes to bindle bindle sir plain joe bindle if you please then turning to the expectant faces round him bindle began his first speech gentlemen leastways i hope so you all seem to know me and likewise to be very fond of me well perhaps i might become fond of you if i don't get to know too much about your habits i'm sorry to break up this ere prayer meeting but i come to have a word with mr little cries of have it with us very well then continued bindle i got a brother-in-law arty by name there were cries of good old hearty seem to know him too perhaps your sings in the choir at his chapel anyhow arty has been praying for me to-night at his chapel and i come to arst mr little what i'd better do bindle's announcement caused a sensation of something of an uproar his voice was drowned in cries of shame just a moment gentlemen and i've done he called me a brother fallen by the wayside a wheat ear among thorns yells of laughter followed this announcement and bindle was pulled down and drink forced upon him soon he was sitting in the most comfortable armchair in the room smoking a colossal cigar with a large kitchen jug full of beer at his elbow he saw before him nearly a dozen of the most riotous spirits in london listening with eager interest to his stories and opinions which they punctuated with gusts of laughter the night was far advanced when at length he rose to go well gentlemen he said i never thought that doctors was such sports now i understand why it is that the ladies is always getting ill so long and thanks for this friendly little evening if i've talked too much you just come and hear mrs bindle one evening and you'll be glad it's me and not er as dick little showed him out bindle inquired how am i to get ome on that psalm singin brother-in-law o mine that's what i wants to know prayin for me in chapel bindle wreaked his disgust on the match he was striking i'll think it over said little and let you know good night and thanks for coming we shall always be glad to see you any sunday night different from arty's sunday nights muttered bindle as he walked away i wonder which makes the best man it's a good job i ain't got anything to do with heaven or them wheat ears might sort of get mixed with the thorns end of chapter ten read by don w jenkins rancho san diego california shaggybark.blogspot.com